Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm doing a collab with one of my really good friends here on YouTube, Bougie Brie. I absolutely adore Brie. We're really good friends, and I feel like she just, like, gets me. You know, like, when you have one of those friends where you can talk and you just immediately understand each other, and then you can go, like, weeks without talking, but then the next time you talk, you're like, you pick up right where you left off. Exactly, like one of those friends. She has an amazing makeup collection. I love her hot takes. I just love everything about her. So make sure you check out her channel linked down below. Whenever Brie reaches out with a like tag idea or a collab idea, I'm immediately like, yes, that's, that's an awesome idea. I love her creativity. I love where she can pull tags from and everything. And so she actually came to me with a list of tags and like this was the one that really caught my eye. So we are going to be doing palettes that we've fallen out of love with. So I picked out 10 palettes. And for me, I thought this was like perfect timing because I'm planning to do a declutter soon. So I'm actually trying to pre-film a couple of things so I can go through and declutter my whole collection. And this is just like a really good exercise to do to go through my eyeshadow palettes and pick out okay so what have I really not been reaching for anymore what have I just fallen out of love with so I have 10 palettes here and I'm actually kind of surprised I went through my whole palette collection and I picked these out and they make sense but like they weren't the palettes I thought I was going to pick so interesting for me I hope you guys find it interesting too so palette number one is from Natasha Denona this is the big green brown palette now when I first got this I was obsessed uh and I kind of felt like I had to be obsessed because of the price point because it's ridiculous <laughs> i should not have spent the money on this it's ridiculous but then um i used it a little bit and then i realized oh it's really overhyped and then i included it in a project pan it was the hp project pan a while ago and i got some pan in it and i kind of fell back in love i was like oh i love these shades i love the palette you know i got back into it and now realizing i haven't really reached for this much especially since i'm now panning a different natasha denona palette for 2021 yeah i've just fallen out of love with it it's at this point, like, I don't think I'm ever going to declutter it just because of that price point and because I finally actually have, like, pan in it. So, like, I'm kind of determined. I, I don't think I'll ever make this a pan that palette, but, like, I now I want to see more pan in this palette. So I don't know if maybe, you know, a, a further reincarnation of the Petty Project pan, I might use this in there. But, yeah, I've definitely been, like, up and down of this palette, and now I'm just kind of, like, meh. Nah. The next palette, this one surprised me, but I have to admit I really have not reached for this and I, when I look at it, I'm not as, as inspired as I once was. And that is The Tribe by Juvia's Place. I, when I first got this, I was so excited. You can see it in the video that I did. I'll throw that video up in the cards when this first came out. I remember loving like the greens and then the shimmers being so inspired. And now I just kind of look at this and I don't know. Like, like the spark just isn't there anymore you know like I feel like I have other palettes now I've been inspired by different things and I can't remember the last time I pulled this out yeah and I think the last time I pulled it out was specifically for the greens to use with a different palette so yeah so like I don't think I would declutter this one honestly there are other Juvia's Place palettes I'll probably declutter uh over this one because this one I loved for so long but like I just like I had that feeling like I just wasn't in love with it as much anymore Next, we have a palette from Melt, and this is the Smoke Sessions palette. This is, I still do kind of hop onto any green palette that I see, but I remember back when there really weren't that many green palettes out there, seeing this come out where it was like half just straight up green was like, oh my god, yes, like I wanted it. And it's, mo it's mainly shimmers, so there's only two mattes here in the middle, and overall it's like a cute palette, but like whenever I actually go in to like do a look, I kind of feel like, like that's it. You know, like I kind of wish I had some other like matte greens in here. Like if this had been just like a straight up green palette, I think I'd be a little bit more obsessed with it. They're really pretty shades, but I'm not pulling this out specifically to use just one of these like as a topper, you know. I don't know. This would be an interesting palette to pan, <laughs> but like I don't feel that same spark and love than when I first got this palette. And that makes me kind of sad. Ooh, this palette is a bit complicated a bit just a bit <laughs> so this is the kate well now for, formerly known as kat von d this is the kindness vegan beauty with be beautiful vegan kindness all the vegans are beautiful and kind and whatnot um so this was the 10th anniversary palette which i purchased before i knew about kat von d's past and i was actually you know, researching. Um, and then everything about Kat Von D came out and I stopped supporting the brand and then Kendo basically kicked her out of the brand, bought her out of the brand. So like there have been ups and downs with this brand. I remember doing, I think I did a palette 
roulette with this and then right after that it was like oh i'm not i'm not supporting the brand anymore so whoops you know but i didn't want to get rid of it because i've actually really liked the color story and i liked the shadows themselves but it literally sat in the back of my collection for years <laughs> and i never really brought it back up again and now that i have it i'm like this is this is still i think useful and honestly i love the packaging packaging is gorgeous i still like the palette but I'm not excited when I see it anymore. And that's only in part because of like the history of Kat Von D herself, but more so like looking at the colors too. Cause I remember, I remember like thinking this was so much more rainbow than it actually is. Cause when I actually go in and look at it, most of this is neutral. <laughs> like, yeah, you've got like a big green and a big blue, but like a lot of these shades are very muted. It's not a Mi Vita Loca, right? I don't know. And see, I don't know how I feel about this. Part of me wants to keep it just because it was limited edition and I really liked it. Part of me wants to declutter it because, like, am I using it? No. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this one. But it's not, like, that happy excitedness that I felt when I first got this. Next, I'm pretty sure this was, like, an impulse buy <laughs> that I bought. I don't know if it was on sale or not. But this is from Too Faced. And this is the Chocolate Gold palette. I remember, like at first being really excited about all of the great shimmers in here and i'm like this is going to be a great companion palette the shades are beautiful and they are the shades are beautiful they are very very like pigmented they feel buttery they go on great but this is definitely like a, for me at least it, this is a companion palette this is not a one palette and you're done unless you're going to go with a really shimmery neutral look or a really out there colorful look which you can do but that's not going to be like my everyday go-to you know so i remember being really excited when i first got it and i used it a few times and then i put it away and then i would pull it out like and shot my stashes and then i wouldn't use it and then i would just put it back in my collection and every now and then which rarely 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 would i think i want a topper and specifically go to this palette because there were other palettes to be quite honest where i would reach for them if i want like a specific pop of color on my lid or on my inner corner and it just wasn't this i don't know i think the neutrals over here are a bit kind of eh like I, I can see like a white shade it's not even a white shade it's a beige shade i could see it being if it was a white shade so you use it as a base for the rest of the colors but it's not uh the black shade i mean i won't say no to a black shade just because i have black hair so i can always use a black shade like in my brows or in my hairline but i don't know looking at it now i'm just like it's a bit muted and it doesn't seem to have a full idea of what it wants to be, you know? So I don't know. I definitely am not as excited about this one. So this hmm, might be on the chopping block. All right, next. So this is a palette that I wanted like for so long. Like when the, this brand first came out, when this palette first came out, I watched a bunch of videos on it. I watched the reviews, but I thought it was too pricey. And I was like, oh, I don't want to buy it right now, maybe later. And then later, like, literally never came until I literally found it, like, in a Marshalls for $9.99. And I picked it up and I was like, oh my god, yes, now I'm going to use it. I'm so excited. And now I have it. And it's just, it's just here. <laughs> so this is from Pretty Vulgar. This is the Nightingale eyeshadow palette. And I remember everyone, like, being excited for, like, such a nice, cool, toned, smoky palette. And the palette itself, the packaging is gorgeous. This is beautiful. <sighs> The, sh the story itself and the shades themselves are like just all right. I will admit I did get suckered in. I'm glad I didn't pay the full price like to get suckered in when this first came out. But the minute I saw it in like the TJ Maxx, I was like, oh, I'm getting this like, just, like immediately because it's something I always wanted, but just never. I, I don't know. It never crossed that threshold, you know, where it's like, oh, this is the price point. I wouldn't pay. I wouldn't pay that much for this. Right. And it never went on sale, at least to a point where like I would consider it worth it until I saw it at that TJ Maxx and it was $9.99. That to me was worth it. But now, I think I can count on one hand how many times I've used this palette. And none of the smoky looks that I get really like wow me. You know, it's something ever really like spectacular. It's just like, oh, it's a smoky look. So this one's, it's, 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 it's a man. Next is a palette that I've had for a while and I actually decluttered like sister palettes to this one. And the only reason I think I'm not decluttering it is like purely sentimental. 
and packaging. <laughs> and this is from The Balm. This is the Meat Matrimony palette. Now, they had a whole series of these palettes with different mats on them, and I had a bunch of them, and I realized I wasn't using any of them. Like, I'm, I'm never reaching for an all-matte palette, just right out the gate. And the others, I literally picked, I was like, okay, which, which packaging do I like better? What color story do I like better? And I picked this one over the rest of them, and I decluttered the rest of them. But still, to this day, do I reach for this palette? No. I was super excited because I remember back like old school YouTube, these palettes were like everywhere. Everyone was talking about them. I remember Emily Noel talking about these and how excited they were to get them. And so I was really excited. And when I finally had enough money to like save up and get one of these, I was ecstatic. And I was like, this looks amazing. I love this. These, these are your perfect everyday kind of shades and they're matte. So you, there's, you, there's so much pa like product because these palettes, these palettes, these pans are so big they're going to last forever. And like I barely use this. <laughs> I just don't and I don't feel as excited about it anymore honestly the only thing like keeping this now for me is just like the packaging and the sentimentality of it <sighs> part of me just wants to like cut off the mirror and just keep the mirror and get rid of the palette you know like just cut it across right here that way I keep the packaging and the mirror that I can use because I don't use this palette I just don't and I was so excited for it and I loved it at first and now it's just like <sighs> Next, we have an e.l.f. palette that I was so excited to get, and then I was, like, shocked by how great the quality was. I did a whole video about it a while ago. This is the e.l.f. Rose Gold Sunset palette. It's their, in their 10-pan um, palette packaging, which are some of my favorite palettes. I remember loving this when I first got it. It's, it's beautiful. It's fall. It's fall in a palette. You've got that beautiful, like, burnt orange shimmer right here it's it's beautiful right i did a few looks i would go back to this every now and then but like over time i'm just not reaching for this and i think it's because i have also another elf palette and it's the i think it's the mad for matte 2 and that one is just like slightly more fall than this one like yeah i remember being so excited for this loving looks that i got and like now i cannot tell you the last time i touched this so I think this one's going to get decluttered. I think so. The only thing that was honestly holding me back is like that big orange shimmer. But I have orange shimmers. So I don't need to keep this whole palette. Honestly, these palettes are such a great deal if like you're on a budget like I was. I remember I couldn't even afford to buy like an entire face of makeup. I had to pick and choose what I wanted to get. And most often I would pick eyeshadow because I loved it so much. So these are awesome. Like I love these 10 pan palettes from e.l.f. But just this one in particular i just i just don't feel the same love for it as i once did next i have a palette that i really loved like specifically for like smoky looks and for traveling but again i can't remember the last time i used it and i do not feel as excited about it anymore this is from huda beauty and this is the smoky obsessions palette i remember being so excited when i got this i think this might have been actually the first huda beauty palette that i tried and I remember getting this and like at first being intimidating, like I, I don't know how to do a smoky eye with these specific looks because or these shades because it was so dark. And I had never really done like a smoky look with such dark and pigmented shades before. So I was a bit intimidated, but I got so many beautiful looks out of this and I was just so excited and I loved how compact it was and I loved the shades. And I remember reaching for this so often when I first got it. And then time went by and time went by and I would just wasn't reaching for this unless specifically like I was traveling. I remember picking this up because it's so small. It's so compact for traveling. Like, but then other than that, again, I'm, when I think about smoky eyes, I'm not thinking particularly, particularly about this palette anymore. And I don't feel as excited looking at it now than I once did. So yeah, so this one, I don't know if I would declutter this one right away, but this one, I feel like I have smoky palettes in my collection that better suit, like, the, the specific smoky look that I was going for, you know, and not just, like, this one. I think it's also particularly when I've done smoky looks now, I've done more cool-toned smoky looks, and this is definitely warm tone. This is very, very warm-leaning with, like, the light sienna and, like, the, the warm browns. And then you just have kind of like that one silver shade in here. But I really like a cool tone smoky look. So that's also what probably has taken me away from this palette. All right. And our last palette, the palette that actually surprised me, 
because I remember loving this for so long, but like now, that's <sighs> no. So this is the ColourPop Yes Please palette. This is the very first palette ColourPop ever came out with, and it was meant to be a dupe for the Natasha Denona Sunset palette. This was hyped to holy hell. This was the beginning of what ColourPop is today, which unfortunately ColourPop is now the embodiment of the you either die the hero or you see your, you live long enough to see yourself become the villain meme. Um, but I remember loving this palette so much, especially because the Sunset palette has a special place in my heart because it was my first Natasha palette and it was one of the first palettes where like, or makeup purchases in general, where I had to like save. Like I think I saved for like eight months. And then waited for the Sephora sale to get that palette. And so it like I had to dedicate myself to getting that palette, right? And then seeing this come out and like having it be such great quality and like rival literally the Sunset palette shocked me. And it made me so happy that I could find something that was the color story that was trending that everyone was talking about, but it was affordable. Like it wasn't $129. It did not take me eight months to save up for that palette. I could buy this after what a paycheck two paychecks, depending on whatever student loans I was paying at the time. But I remember being so in love with this. But as time has gone by, I've actually reached more for the Sunset palette than I have for this palette. And I think it's also because of my current feelings about ColourPop. I really don't like what ColourPop has become. And it has soured me a bit to the ColourPop products I still own. Not the Good Sport palette, though. I freaking love that palette. <laughs> and I will love that palette to the day that I die. But this palette, it's, it's a little bit bittersweet looking back on this palette now knowing how much I loved it, how much I appreciated the affordability, how much, how great and how like sweet ColourPop was at the beginning. That's what this palette represents. And looking at it, I can appreciate it for the palette that it is, but I definitely don't love it the way that I used to. And on that somber note, I think we are done. So those are all of the palettes that I've noticed that I have fallen out of love with. Thank you so much again to Brie for collabing with me and bringing this great idea up because honestly, this was such a great exercise to do before my upcoming declutter. And I've got some thoughts. I've got some choices to make. And I mean, some thoughts, some decisions are a little clearer now and some are just... I'm extra confused, <laughs> but I had fun doing this. Make sure you guys all check out Bree's channel and her video. I'll have them both linked down below and in the first pinned comment. While you're down there, also let me know, are there any eyeshadow palettes or any makeup products in general that you've fallen out of love with but that you still have in your collection? Let me know, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.